Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm very excited because we are diving into a piece of gear that's often overlooked but is absolutely fundamental to our passion, the telescope mount. Now I know that some of you might think a mount? How exciting can that be? But trust me on this one. I've recently got my hands on a mount that's, well, let's just say it's not your typical equatorial or alt azimuth mount that most of us are used to seeing. It approaches things a bit differently and I've been itching to explore it and share it with you all. Because here's the thing. You can have the most amazing telescope optics, the most powerful light bucket imaginable, but if it's sitting on a shaky, unstable or difficult to use mount, your viewing experience is going to suffer. Massively. The mount is the unsung hero, the bedrock of your entire setup. It's the critical foundation that allows your telescope to actually perform. Too often, especially when upgrading, people pour their budget into the optical tube assembly and treat the mount as an afterthought. So today we are not just looking at any mount, we are looking at one that does things a bit differently and we are going to explore why investing in a good mount is one of the best decisions you can make for your astronomy journey. Stick around, this is going to be interesting. I've been planning a video on telescope mounts for a long time now, but always had the feeling that something was missing. This is why when Track the Stars contacted me about a possible review of their new TTS-160 Panther light mount, I knew that this mount type might just be the missing piece for the video, so I said yes without thinking twice about it. I also want to mention that while the gear was generously provided by Trek the Stars for the purpose of this video, my opinions are entirely my own and they didn't influence the verdict of this video in any way. Founded in 2004, Trek the Stars is a small Danish manufacturer of advanced mountings for astronomical telescopes. They focus on convenience, portability and precision and now we are going to see if their latest creation, the TTS-160 Panther Light, can deliver on these promises. Let's look at the mount head first. It features an alt azimuth design, making it ideal suited for visual observations of the night sky. Its construction utilizes aluminium for the housing and stainless steel for the mechanics, complemented by a 3D printed exterior shell, resulting in a very sleek appearance. Tractor Stars uses PET-G filament for printing the plastic parts, which is UV resistant and can hold up to direct sunlight without a problem. The design is notably minimalist, featuring only three control knobs, an altitude lock and orange clutches for altitude and azimuth, along with an RJ45 connector for connecting the Nexus Wi-Fi adapter. Above this lies an embedded magnet which allows for the Wi-Fi box to simply snap on, which is a really handy feature. A key highlight of this mount is definitely the capacity to hold not just one or two but three optical tube assemblies at the same time. Because the load capacity depends as much on the telescope length as on the weight, it's difficult to put up a fixed number of kilograms but it should be possible to load up the TTS-160 with up to 40 kilograms of gear, including the necessary counterweights for balancing of course. So even 8 inch refractors or 14 inch SETs shouldn't be a problem with this mount. And as long as you can balance the weight, you can even add a third telescope or a pair of binoculars to the top. The mount head itself weighs only 7 kilograms. This capability offers the flexibility to have dedicated telescopes ready for multiple applications at the same time, such as high power planetary viewing, low power wide field observations and solar observations for example. To effectively manage these loads, it requires to perfectly balance the whole setup. 
To achieve this, you can add one or two four kilogram counterweights to the extended arms that attach directly to the mount head. A choice of a single eight kilogram weight is also available. By using the Nexus 2 Wi-Fi adapter, you can accurately track the position of both axes on the display of your mobile device. This way you can always see what the telescope is pointing at, which is very useful when trying to find or identify targets in the night sky. For this, Track the Stars recommends using Sky Safari Plus or Pro, as compatibility with other tools like Stellarium is unfortunately missing. Moving over to the next component, we arrive at the optional peer extension, which rises the mount head by 200 mm. Just like the tube for the mount head, it's 160 mm wide and made out of anodized aluminum, while weighing 1.8 kg. This extension can be useful when observing objects that sit high in the sky, resulting in a low position for the eyepiece. It is attached to the head with the help of six star knobs and to the pier with a quick lock pier adapter using a standard 3 eighths of an inch thread. The final piece is the pier, equipped with folding legs to maximize portability. Its construction combines an aluminum tube with stainless steel legs, providing a robust structure that weighs 11 kilograms and feels very substantial. The pier offers an impressive 80 kilograms load capacity, comfortably accommodating even the heaviest equipment configurations. Standing 78 centimeters high and a bit over a meter wide when set up, it collapses efficiently for storage and transportation, capable of fitting into a 60 centimeter long padded transportation bag. So getting started with the TTS-160 involves assembling its various components, a process designed to be very straightforward and requires no tools, making field setup intuitive and fast. You do, however, need to purchase the components separately. This means that the TTS-160 is a modular system of components that can be assembled so that it best suits your needs. Thanks to the standard 3 eighths of an inch connection, the compatibility with other items isn't an issue. For example, you can only get the mount head and place it on an existing tripod using the tripod adapter, or get the pier with the folding legs and use an existing EQ mount head if astrophotography is more your jam. Anyway, once fully assembled, the TTS-160 is visually impressive and clearly demonstrates its capability to handle a wide range of telescope configurations with ease. So let's put exactly this to the test. In order to best test the capabilities of the TTS-160, I have used it in two different configurations. A single OTA mounted up top, this was a 4-inch ED refractor with a diagonal and binocular viewer and two zoom eyepieces attached to it. And the second configuration where I used a 5-inch APO refractor and a 6-inch Newtonian reflector. As expected, in the first configuration, the mount had had no trouble handling the somewhat undersized OTA. The movements are very smooth on both axes and the clutches allow for very fine adjustments so that the amount of friction can be set just right. Even when loaded with the significantly heavier OTAs during the second test scenario, the mount's performance remained completely unaffected. Once balanced, its movements were just as smooth and effortless as during the first test. Furthermore, it maintained rock-solid stability regardless of the telescope's position. This combination of rigidity and minimal vibration transfer is something I've only previously encountered in mounts like the EQ8 Pro from Skywatcher or AZ8 from Los Mandy. It truly is an impressively solid mount that also offers the convenience of very easy assembly and disassembly for transport. 
The push to go functionality is also good and helpful. The built in optical encoders have a resolution of almost 80,000 pulses per revolution for both axes or 16 arc seconds per pulse, ensuring smooth and accurate tracking. Setting everything up in Sky Safari Plus is straightforward and in my case it worked without a problem. I couldn't get it to work with Stellarium though. According to the manufacturer, only the upgraded Nexus DSC Pro box can be used with Stellarium. This one that I have isn't compatible. While the TTS-160 is an excellent piece of equipment, there are areas where tractor stars could potentially enhance it further. These points are largely minor suggestions, not deal breakers, but worth considering for future iterations. Firstly, I would appreciate better tactile differentiation between the two clutch engagement knobs. While easily learned by sight, varying their size, adding distinct grooves or different patterns would allow for easier non-visual operation. Secondly, the placement of the magnet for the Nexus 2 module and position of the phone holder could be improved. Their current positions limit the altitude movement range. Tilting too far below 0 degrees causes contact with the Nexus module, while tilting past approximately 85 degrees risks the telescope hitting the phone holder if the OTA is top mounted. Another point is the charging cable length for the Nexus 2 module, which is way too short for such a tall mount, even though its internal battery should last throughout the night without a problem. It would be more convenient if this Wi-Fi adapter didn't need to be removed for charging. Finally, during testing I often found myself searching for a convenient point on the telescope or mount to make manual adjustments to its orientation. A longer handle attached directly to the mount head, similar to those on camera tripods, would be significantly more convenient for manual operation than having to grasp the eyepiece OTA or counterweight arms uh, when trying to follow the target across the night sky. And then there's the price. As you've likely gathered from its capabilities, this isn't an entry-level or budget-friendly option. The specific combination and configuration shown here represents an investment of around 4,700 euros, including tax. A price point clearly outside the typical budget category for many enthusiasts. However, when evaluating the TTS-160 against other mounts that offer comparable load capacities, um, precision, stability and the unique capability to handle multiple optical tubes at once with relative uh, good portability, its price begins to appear more competitive and justifiable within that high performance segment of the market. Ultimately, mounts such as this underscore the critical role of stability and user friendliness in astronomy gear. A great mount, in my view, doesn't require a wealth of features like GoTo or even Push to Go like this one. Its primary function is simply to hold the telescope or telescopes steady. The truly essential qualities are stability, the absence of vibration transfer to the optical tube, and straightforward operation. So even though the TTS-160 Panther Lite represents a significant investment, it also clearly does embody these core requirements. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the TTS-160 and about telescope mounts in general. I'm very much looking forward to reading your opinions in the comments below. I also want to thank um, track the stars again for giving me the chance to test their new telescope mount. I had a lot of fun doing it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.